It's winter in London, dark, cold and dull. At this time of year, the gloominess of the concrete is usually matched by a glum, grey sky. Amidst all of this, it's easy to imagine that the only bright spots are the Christmas lights hanging from buildings and lampposts across the city. But if you know where to look, this can be a wonderful time for getting out in nature around London. I'm Ben Chappell, a PhD student at Imperial College London, and I'm going to show you some of the best places around the city for winter wildlife. Here at Imperial, we're incredibly lucky to have Hyde Park and Kensington Gardens right on our doorstep. Between them, these two oases cover over 600 acres of grass, woods and wetland, providing a home for an amazing diversity of creatures. Green and great spotted woodpeckers, grey squirrels, great crested grebes and grey herons are just a few of the countless species that make their home in the park's varied habitats. Linger until dusk and you could catch sight of a bird that you might not expect to find within inner London, the little owl. First seen in the parks just ten years ago, several pairs now breed every year. On still sunny winter days, look out for them basking on an exposed branch. Although much of the park is tidy and formal, in recent years some patches have been allowed to grow wilder including this lovely area of rough grassland. As well as providing a glimpse of how Hyde Park might once have looked, this more relaxed approach has helped to boost biodiversity. Most of these meadow and grassland areas are undoubtedly at their most beautiful in spring and summer, when a carpet of wildflowers attracts bees and butterflies, but they also provide vital foraging opportunities for wintering birds. It is amazing how strongly nature can rebound when it's given a little space. And this could be just the beginning of a profound regeneration in London's natural environment. In 2021, the city government, along with the Department for the Environment, announced their intention to rewild parts of the capital. This is a vision of a vibrant future London, with more wild spaces, more scrub, river re-wiggling, and possibly even the reintroduction of long-lost ecosystem engineers like beavers. And if the idea of seeing beavers roaming London's lakes and canals sounds far-fetched, just consider that they are already a common urban species elsewhere in Europe, including Sweden and the Netherlands. If these ambitious plans can be realised, the benefits to people and wildlife would be immense. Not only would we see a boom in nature for Londoners to enjoy, but the regeneration of habitats would also reduce air pollution and flooding, while simultaneously taking the capital closer to its net zero carbon goals. Maybe one day we will see beavers swimming in the serpentine, but even now, this lake supports a wonderful diversity and abundance of life, especially in winter, when wildfowl numbers are at their peak. This is the most important site in central London for the familiar but still spectacular mute swan. Diving ducks like common potchard and tufted duck can also be seen, alongside the beautiful shoveler, which uses its extraordinary spatulate bill to filter small invertebrates from the water surface. The greylag Canada and Egyptian geese that are all now common in the park descend from escaped captive birds, but they are occasionally joined by their truly wild relatives. Last winter, a rare Russian white-fronted goose even made an appearance at the Princess Diana Memorial Fountain. Besides the serpentine, London is blessed with several important wetland sites and habitats, perhaps the most obvious of which is the River Thames itself. But it wasn't always like this. Back in 1957, the Natural History Museum declared this mighty river biologically dead. Decades, centuries even, of ceaseless abuse and pollution had turned it into a vast, foul-smelling drain, devoid of almost all life. Since then, however, better legislation and dedicated conservation work have steadily helped to reduce the amounts of poisonous chemicals and sewage released into the water. These efforts have paid off spectacularly, 
with a recent Zoological Society of London report stating that the tidal Thames once again provides a rich and varied habitat to an abundance of wildlife and many benefits to people. There are now well over a hundred species of fish living in the Thames, up from practically none 60 years ago. These even include seahorses and three different species of shark. With this great conservation success story has come a resurgence of fish-eating predators. Cormorants, grebes and grey herons are now a frequent sight. Keep an eye out for them the next time you take a wander along the river. It's not just birds, though, that now come to hunt in the Thames. The fish are also pursued by predators you probably associate more with open seas and exposed coastlines than with central London. Seals are being seen more and more often in London, sometimes well upriver. In 2021, they've been spotted as far west as Richmond and Hampton Court. There are two species of resident seal in the UK, and both can be seen in the Thames. The most recent population estimate in the Thames estuary, done by ZSL, came to almost 800 common and nearly 3,000 grey seals. These numbers have rebounded enormously, thanks in large part to the clean-up of the river. While grey seals might be more numerous out in the estuary, it is in fact the common, or harbour seal, that accounts for the majority of sightings in London itself. This is because, while greys typically head out to sea to hunt, common seals are very much at home upriver. In the UK, they've been spotted a hundred miles inland, and populations elsewhere in the world can even live exclusively in fresh water. Nevertheless, it's well worth keeping an eye out for both species. Common seals are considerably smaller than greys, with a shorter muzzle and much cuter appearance, whereas the larger species has a long, flat forehead and a distinctive profile that gives it its scientific name, Halicoerus gripus, meaning hook-nosed sea pig. Some of the best places to look are around Canary Wharf and the RSPB reserve at Raynham Marshes. If you are lucky enough to see a seal, please do report your sighting to ZSL. The link is in the description below. While seal sightings are on the up, another aquatic mammal remains elusive. But perhaps, with increasing evidence of their presence in London's peripheral waterways, such as the Lee Valley, one day soon we may again see otters in the tidal Thames. Accompanying the ecological recovery of the Thames itself has been the recreation of some of the wetland habitats that once covered the river's banks. One of the most spectacular examples of this is the London Wetland Centre in Barnes. 25 years ago, this was nothing more than a few bleak, disused reservoirs, but now it is one of the finest urban nature reserves in the world. Years of painstaking work involving the movement of thousands of tonnes of soil and the planting of over 300,000 water plants and over 27,000 trees have transformed this 100-acre site into the jewel in London's wild crown it is today. Over 250 species of bird have now been recorded here and amongst countless conservation success stories is a thriving reintroduced population of water voles, one of the UK's most endangered mammals. David Attenborough even described the reserve as the ideal model for how humankind and the natural world may live side by side in the 21st century. Although a visit to the London Wetland Centre is a fantastic experience at any time of year, my favourite season is winter. The reserve is hugely important for a range of wintering birds, some of which arrive in large numbers from as far afield as the Arctic. Lapwings are a scarce bird in London, but they find a home here. Like the Serpentine, the Wetland Centre is a fantastic place to see wildfowl, especially wintering ducks. There are nationally important numbers of species like gadwall and shoveler, and you might be lucky enough to encounter goldeneye, 
a diving duck that breeds in tree holes within boreal forests. The widgeon is a dabbling duck that actually spends much of its time out of the water, feeding on grasses. This is one of the best places in London to find this beautiful bird, with up to several hundred visiting the centre's grazing marsh each year, mostly from Scandinavia and Russia. The male's bright yellow crown is there to catch the attention of the drabber females. The reserve also provides an opportunity to catch up with several elusive species that can be difficult or even near impossible to find elsewhere in London. Out in the marshes and rough grassland, there are certainly plenty of places for cryptic and secretive creatures to hide. Even when they're almost in plain sight, they can be infuriatingly difficult to pick out from amongst the thick vegetation. But when they do finally show themselves, we can see that these masters of camouflage, with their detailed, intricate plumages, are amongst the most subtly beautiful of all animals. This stunning bird is a common snipe, and the best time of year to see it is winter, when over a million individuals are present in Britain. Part of the sandpiper family of birds, snipes use their astonishingly long bills to probe mud and foliage for their invertebrate prey. Deep within the tangled reed beds, however, lurks an even more vanishingly elusive seasonal visitor, the bittern. So far this winter, at least two of these magnificent herons are known to have arrived here, but you'll need better luck than I had this time if you want to see one. The London Wetland Centre also maintains a superb captive collection of water birds from around the world, many of which are highly endangered. It's a wonderful place to spend a day out, and one of the very best locations in London for a winter wildlife walk. Winter can be difficult. It's dark and damp, and a lot of our most cherished wildlife, be it butterflies, flowers or summer migrant birds, has disappeared. Still, there remains a host of special creatures to see, and the colder months bring species and spectacles to London that occur at no other time of year. Much of this wildlife is now drawn to habitats that scarcely existed a few decades ago, restoring the Thames, creating new wetlands, the potential for rewilding and returning lost species. These efforts all provide real hope that nature can thrive alongside people, even in the heart of London. And for me, there's no better antidote to those winter blues than getting out and seeing it for yourself. <laughs>